Welcome to Revangelical, Rethinking Christian Living, a podcast that aims to encourage, challenge, and equip Christians in their daily walk with Christ. Join us as we discuss scripture, theology, the issues of the day, and uplifting stories from folks just like you. Here's your host, Danny Forshe. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our Revangelical podcast ministry. I'm delighted to have you join in with us today. Uh, Here at DFEA, our mission is to share messages of hope uh, and encouragement from the Word of God. I think it's very neat, and I'm grateful to God for this episode, 292, almost 300. Uh, That's just a big milestone in my mind. I'm grateful to God for allowing us to uh, be able to continue on uh, in this podcast ministry and reach almost 300, 300 episodes. God is so good to us, and I thank you for uh, tuning us in and listening and recommending us uh, to your family, to your friends, and uh, that is, uh, you know, it's just such a blessing that God has given us this opportunity to be able to teach His Word, to be able to encourage people, especially, you know, in these crazy times in which we live, and that's why I've been so excited and to teach this series of messages called Winning the Battle uh, in Your Mind. And I'm sharing how we can have victory over such common struggles like fear and anxiety and depression. And I pray that God uses me and uses our time uh, as I teach on the subject uh, of winning the battle that rages in everybody's uh, minds. And so I've been transparent over the last few weeks. I taught this series here at Great Hills Baptist Church. Now I'm teaching it for our podcast listeners. And I've been just real open, transparent, vulnerable, even just to say this is my own battle. And I have learned through the years and uh, through God's great patience and through His Word, how you and I can literally have victory. Now think about that for a moment. You and I, uh, who have a propensity toward worry and fear and anxiety and depression, you and I can have uh, a victory. And it is through the power of the Holy Spirit as we apply the truths of God's Word directly to our our mental anguish and our mental pain. Uh, Every day, uh, many people, uh, they lose this battle in their minds. They decide that life is not worth living, and so they take their lives. And uh, it is so very tragic, and and it's very heartbreaking. And many high-profile people that uh, you and I know and, and love or, you know, at a distance, we would watch them on television or listen to them on the radio or personal friends, even in my own family. My family uh, has dealt with this, uh, uh, th- this terrible reality in our world called suicide. I think about Robin Williams, you know, a few years ago and more recently, just at the end of April, Naomi Judd took her life. Um, it, it's, it's so painful. Every time I hear this, it tells me that another person has lost their battle, their mental, emotional battle. They have given in, capitulated to um, the lies of the devil, thinking their life is not worth living. Why should they go on even trying? And so nobody cares. And, and you know what I'm saying? And they just feed themselves these, these lies and, and it's deceptive. And so, you know, today, I, I know the, the episode today is... Um, it's hard, um, but I think we should. I think we should address it. And I, I want to take some time as we talk about winning the battle in our mind and talk about suicide. Almost forty six thousand people died by suicide in the United States in twenty twenty. Twenty four thousand of those took their lives with a gun. Uh, Eight hundred thousand people die by suicide every year worldwide. I read a New York Times article recently that said, and I quote, when Naomi Judd, the Grammy-winning country music singer, uh, when she died, her daughter, Ashley Judd, said that she had lost her mother to the disease of mental illness. Miss Judd was more candid in a later interview saying uh, that her mother had died of a self-inflicted gunshot at her home in Tennessee. And... um, And she went on to say, I just want to encourage people who are distressed to seek help. The article goes on to say, Miss Judd, an actress, told Diane Sawyer on Good Morning America that she was speaking out about her mother's death because her family wanted to share the information before it became public without our controls. You can just see the hurt and just the pain and and the family that's wrestling with how do we 
How do we get this message out? What has happened to our mom? Well, what if we could get a message out that could help somebody else not do uh, what our mom did? Naomi Judd and her other daughter, the article goes on to say, Winona Judd dominated the country music uh, charts in the 1980s. As the mother-daughter duo the, uh, known as the Judds, Naomi Judd, 76, died on April 30, 30th, a day before the duo was inducted into the Country Music uh, Hall of Fame. Um, she said, she said, I went to see my mom and went outside for just a few minutes to greet a friend who was coming to see her. And then when I went upstairs, I realized that my mom had taken her life. I wish we could get the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ to every person in the world, especially those who are struggling and contemplating, really contemplating this very real temptation to take their own life. What I would tell people and what I'm sharing with you in this podcast today in this episode is that there is hope. I know there's a battle raging in many of your minds and and you don't have to give in. You don't have to listen to the lies of the devil that he just puts on replay in your mind. And we're going to talk about some of these as we look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Look, if you're having these suicidal thoughts, I want to encourage you, please reach out to a friend, uh, to a pastor, to a counselor, or even call the National Suicide Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Yeah, I would encourage you to do that. 1-800-273-8255. I was looking uh, just today at the National Suicide Prevention website, the Lifeline. On their website, it says, this is a national network of local crisis centers that provides free uh, and confidential emotional support to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress. For the 24 hour a day, seven day a week uh, in the United States, they have, you have this access, this number you can call. It says, goes on to say on the website, we have committed to improving crisis services and advancing suicide prevention by empowering individuals uh, to reach out to a professional uh, counselors and to help build awareness. Ooh, that's heavy. I know that's a lot, but look, whenever you talk about mental illness and you talk about the battle of your mind, I think we have to give, um, at least give some time uh, to this very dark reality of suicide. But our text today is one that's one of my favorite. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 10. If you have your Bible open or uh, if you just want to listen in closely, lean in and as I share with you this message of uh, don't give the devil an, a seat uh, at your table. Don't give the enemy a seat at your table. And so this is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, read verses 3 through 5. And it says this, For though we walk in the flesh, uh, we do not war according to the flesh. Uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now check this out bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Wouldn't that be awesome if everybody could get this message that they could capture those thoughts, those debilitating, even evil thoughts. You say, well, where does that come from? Well, it comes from the enemy, the enemy of our souls, the devil. Sometimes it comes from within our own self. Sometimes those thoughts are are actually words that somebody else has spoken and we've repeated them. We've translated those words into thoughts and their own replay in our mind. And the Bible says, look, you don't have to tolerate that. You could take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, meaning you don't have to engage in those thoughts. You can turn it over to the Lord and make those thoughts surrender to the obedience of Christ. Well, last time we looked at what does this text mean? And so I want to go over this just briefly as a transition to some more practical uh, applications of the text. What it means is we are at war. We are at war with an enemy. Uh, he is very strong, but he is a defeated foe altogether. Our battle is a very spiritual battle. It's played out in our heart, our mind, our emotions, and it affects us in every way, including the physical. And that just makes sense, right? That when whatever we think, uh, we eventually will actuate those thoughts. We will put those thoughts into action. It's going to come out, right? The battle in the mind, whether it's won or it's lost, uh, it's, the evidence will be seen in the words we say 
and the actions in which we engage. And we all know that, right? We know there's power. It all starts in the mind. Uh, nobody just wakes up with no uh, a forethought and just say, well, I just think I'll take my life today. No, no, no. Or nobody says, well, I think I'll just go commit some crazy, heinous crime today. No, it, it always is preceded with deep thoughts, right? The mind is so powerful. And that's why we have to capture those thoughts and make them captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, this is an interesting Greek word. It, it, we translate it bringing into captivity, bringing every thought into captivity. And what this means to capture and bring it under control. Every thought. Think about that. Every thought in that moment of accusation or temptation, deception, suicidal thoughts, harsh words, whatever, whatever. The devil uh, throws at us in the spiritual realm that affects our minds, our hearts, uh, that will eventually impact what we say and what we do. We can stop it and we can take it captive and bring it under control. You said, you know, I have that power. I can do that. If you know Christ, you have this power. You have the power of the Holy Spirit living within you. Romans 8 says the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. We make those thoughts obedient to Christ. We make them obey and submit to Christ. When the thought comes, um, look, we can do a couple things. We can welcome it or we can shun the thought. We can give the enemy a seat at the table, as Louis Giglio talks about in his great book. We can give the enemy a seat at the table of our hearts and our minds, or watch this, we can resist him and we can refuse him a place uh, at our table, the table of our mind. If he's granted access uh, to the table of your mind, it will end in destruction and pain and hurt refusing him in the name of Jesus and the power of Jesus will lead to life and peace. And what's so amazing to me is, is that you and I, we actually get to decide. We, we do not have to be hapless, helpless victims. We can entertain those thoughts or we can wrestle with them and say we, we make them captive. We bring them under submission to the Lordship of Christ. So, Talked last time about what the text means. Just wanted to touch base on it. Just touch base on it just a little bit more. And now I want to go to number two, is how can I apply these truths uh, to my life? Um, how can we apply the truth of the Word of God to our modern day situation? I mean, we all are going to have to battle the thoughts, right? Uh, some of you, like me, have to battle them maybe a little more frequently, you know, than others. But all of us, you know, created in the image of God, have the fellowship, have the capacity to fellowship with God, to know God, to reason, to, uh, to think deeply with philosophy and, and theology and metaphysics. I mean, we, we have this wherewithal, right? The plant life, the animal life, they don't have that ability, but we do. And the enemy wants to come in. He seeks to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And the first way he does that and his most powerful way he does that is through our minds. So we're well equipped as followers of Jesus to win these battles. Yes, we are in the flesh or we are human beings walking on this earth, but we will have, we absolutely must engage in spiritual battles in the mind. Now, as I said earlier, the devil is relentless and he will not leave us alone. And before salvation, if you think about it, you were living a life that gratified the lust of the flesh and uh, you were not a foe of darkness, but you were in cooperation uh, with the darkness. Uh, but once you gave your life to Christ, you have the Holy Spirit within you and the evil one is in full battle array against you. Now, his mission is to attack and to tempt you and me to sin. Why does he do that? Well, he wants to bring harm to Christ and to Christ church, and he wants to hurt our witness and our testimony. Uh, but again, we're not helpless victims here. We don't have to just wallow or in the mire of woe is me and, and just lay down and just say, well, I just have to take it. No, you don't. I mean, think of what Paul is saying. We take these thoughts captive, right? If you don't take them captive and deal with them, then it will, it, it will just increase in severity to the place of 
uh, debilitation, to the place of despair, and eventually to the place of you'll, you'll entertain thoughts of taking your life. But the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, but you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you, Jesus, right, than he that is in the world, the devil. I like the way 2 Peter 1 states it. It says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we have that power, we have these promises, we have the Holy Spirit of God living within us. And so here's a couple things I want you to tuck away in your mind. Number one is remember, as we're talking about, uh, don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Remember that this table is a table for two and not for three, okay? This, This is a table for you and Jesus, not for you and Jesus and the devil, okay? This is a table of grace and Satan is not invited. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about our minds, right? And if you read Louis Giglio's book, Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table, you, you will recognize very quickly that he is talking about a very spiritual battle that takes place not in your eye, not in your hand, but in your mind, in your, in your innermost being. Now, the devil will invite himself, but we resist him. He will appear as an angel of light to help you, but he's not there to help you but he's there to punish and to bring pain. And one of the first things that he will do is question what God has clearly said to you. God has told you the truth of the matter, but the enemy is he's trying to, uh, you know, eke his way up to your table and to make himself at home in your mind. One of the first things he's going to do is what he did with Eve in Genesis 3, 1. He's going to say something like this. Did God really say that? Has God indeed said, so he began to question or put a question mark where God clearly puts an exclamation point. Uh, Giglio talks about um, how Satan will come like a friend, empathetic. He might even quote the Bible to you, but the truth of the matter is, and I'm quoting Pastor Giglio here in his book, quote, when he says, he wants to gain access to your mind so he can destroy you. He wants to get inside your head so harmful thoughts can be planted within you. Those thoughts will grow unchecked and spill out into actions. The devil is vicious and cruel, and he's always prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking for somebody to devour, and that somebody is you, end of quote. So keep that in mind. Number one, that this is a table of grace. This is a table for two, for you and Jesus. Now, the context, again, is we're wrestling with our thought life, you know. We're, we're trying to put in good thoughts and keep out the bad because the thought life will eventuate into our actions and our words. In other words, our attitude, right, it will determine <laughs> our altitude, how high we're going to soar or how low we're going to walk. So it's so important. And most of you understand this. Most of you get this, that, wow, I've got to get a grip on my thought life, on my, the battle that is raging uh, in, my, in my mind. So the second thing I would tell you is this. Resist the lies and replace them with the truth, okay? It's not, it's not enough just to recognize that there's a battle and to know that there's an enemy that wants to invade your table of grace. That's good to know that. That's the beginning point. But number two, resist it. Remember 2 Corinthians 10, take those thoughts captive. Resist the lies, and then what do you do? Replace it with the truth. Don't leave your mind an open vacuum, just an open space. No, something will fill that empty space. And let it be thoughts of purity, thoughts of God, thoughts of the scripture. Matthew chapter four, remember? Every time the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus responded by doing what? He quoted the word of God. He didn't allow the enemy access into his mind. He stopped him at the very beginning. He said, no, devil, I'm not going to listen to you. You're telling me lies, but here's what the word of God says. Uh, Thus saith the word of the Lord. 
of darkness and lies, man, they flee when they are exposed to the truth. So be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for these lies that Satan will tempt you uh, to believe. And again, I keep referring to Pastor Giglio and uh, in his book, Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. His book, along with Craig Rochelle's book, uh, Winning the War in Your Mind, I cannot recommend those highly enough. And so I have devoured these books and penetrated with my mind just deeply into the passages of Scripture that we're studying. And uh, it has helped me tremendously. And I'm really hoping this is going to help you. Uh, So here's the list provided by Pastor Giglio. And and we're going to address each one of these in our next episode of Revangelical. So he says, be on the lookout. Watch out for these lies. The lie of comparison. That's a tough one. Number two, the lie that you are doomed. Oh, I'm just doomed. There's no hope. Yeah, I'm worthless. I mean, it's this thing is just going not going to turn out good. Who's who's telling you that? I mean, think about that. Who's feeding you that baloney? Those you know where it's coming from, right? Number three he says, here it is, straight up, the lie of worthlessness. You know, I'm worthless. I am hopeless. And that's the last one. D is the lie that there's no way out. Um, and I began this episode with the way I'm going to close this episode. If you believe these lies enough, com- always comparing yourself to other people, you always fall short. Yeah, you, you're, you're just doomed. You know, you're just a loser. You're just always going to lose. I'm just worthless. Nobody really knows me. Nobody really cares. You know, I'd probably be just better off if I wasn't here. Now, look, if, if you walk down that path long enough, it's going to end up in, in a disaster. And that's why it's so important to take these thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but powerful in God for pulling down strongholds and taking captive every thought, making it uh, obedient uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I tell you, I'm real excited to announce that DFEA is making... Um, this teaching, this whole series that I am doing on winning the battle uh, in your mind, uh, we're making it available in an ebook uh, that's going to um, come out uh, very soon. If it hasn't come out already by the time this uh, this episode is released, and to all of those who sign up to receive our free daily devotion and our podcast, uh, we're going to give you access to download the ebook called "Winning the Battle uh, in Your Mind." And I just feel so strongly about this. I want everybody, um, if you have a computer, you can download it. It can be your ebook. You can put it on your phone, you put it on your tablet, and you can just bring it up whenever uh, you want to read it. It might uh, one day be in a published book form, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and get it out to as many people as we can. So uh, be looking for it. Uh, we'll be blasting it out on social media, and we'll make it available to you. Uh, all you got to do is say, hey, uh, here's my email send it to me. You know, here, yes, I'll receive your devotions and your podcast. Send me that, send me that book and we will do that. Uh, we'll pray with us that God would use this for his glory and that he would, um, you know, just use it to help many people who are struggling with anxiety, with worry, with fear, and, and even with depression. And again, that might be you. And if that is you, uh, I just want you to know you're, you're not alone, okay? The devil, he wants to make you think you're alone, that you're the only person dealing with this, but you're not. Many others are, and there is help. Look, there is hope. Uh, Remember what we said earlier, reach out to a counselor, to a friend, to a pastor, uh, to the national hotline of the National Suicide Prevention Hotline number, and just reach out to someone and let us help you and encourage you. Okay, that's step number one. Number two, you know, I would encourage you. And it's this in our mind, the battle for our mind. And just, just remember, this is a table, not for the devil, but for you and Jesus, and replace the lies with the truth of what God's word says about him and what God's word says about you. So we're for you. We love you. We're going to pray for you right now. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for uh, the opportunity to speak truth and speak life. Thank you for 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. Lord, so liberating. It's so explosively powerful. It, 
It obliterates the evil thoughts. We take them captive, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for giving us this power. Thank you that we don't have to live in defeat and depression. God, we don't have to take our lives in suicide, but God, we can yield our lives to you in service to you and to our fellow man. Thank you, Lord, that there's such a better way, and it's the way of Christ. It's the way of the gospel. And so I'm praying today, Lord, for whoever this lady might be, or whoever this man might be, uh, that as they're listening to this podcast, that Lord, they would, they would realize, Lord, it's not an accident, but it's by your divine favor and it's by your divine initiative, Lord, that they are listening to this today. And I'm praying for them, God. First of all, if they don't know you, they would know you now. They would surrender their life to you. They would turn from their sins and invite Christ into their life. Look, if you're listening and you say, I'm hopeless, there's no hope. Look, there is hope. And he has a name. His name is Jesus. So do this. Just say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, come into my life. I believe that you are real. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You arose from the dead. So I'm giving you my life right now. Praise God. As you do that, friend, as you do that, as you yield your life to the Lord, he comes into you. His Holy Spirit takes up residence in your spirit. And now you're a child of God and you can walk in victory and let us know about it. Man, I would love to hear. Uh, you can send me an email, d 4 dfea.com and share with me that you've given your life to Christ. Let us encourage you. Maybe you're listening to this prayer right now and you're like, man, I know the Lord, uh, but I just, you know, I'm just in a dark place. I'm in a hard place right now. I'm praying for you. Father, be with her, be with him. And God, just renew the joy of their salvation. Lord, help them see that they're not alone, that God, you are there and you love them. And help them, Lord, turn to you and help them get back into the word of God. Help them, Lord, to get in community with other believers and so that, Lord, they can be ministered to, be encouraged, but also they can help others. Lord, we love you. Thank you for our time together. Pray this helps a lot of people. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Thanks for listening to Revangelical. We hope today's episode has edified and enhanced your walk with God. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next week. Like the sound of Revangelical? Our audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at podsworth.com.